Yeah, um, I think the, the first half really set the tone for us. Um, from there, when we come in at half-time, it's just about keeping the, the right mentality and the positive attitude, really, and, and going to finish the game and score more goals. And you passed Eric Cantona on the United all-time list of goal scorers, and that's a pretty impressive <laughs> list to be on. And, you've, and, of course, a player that has been revered by United fans through the years. Yeah, he's, he's obviously a, a top player that's that done a lot for this club. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased to, to go past him today. And, um, you know, for me, it's, I just want to score more goals and keep helping the team. We saw the hunger of the team, but it was essential to respond, wasn't it? City are charging, Liverpool are getting back on track too. Yeah, it's, but we, we, we have to not look at them and we focus on ourselves. You know, we're, we're a team that's still improving. Um, we're still, we're not a team that's been, you know, a ready-made team for the last two or three years. Um, I think we're just getting there now and, you know, we're still learning a lot as a group. So, um, we have to concentrate on ourselves and just keep improving and working on ourselves. I want to change the tack a little bit because we saw the statement on the front of the programme tonight, the, the United team united against racism. It's important to, to speak out because players are being targeted and yeah. players are having to put up with some you know, just unforgivable abuse. Yeah, it's, um, it's something that's, that's happening and, um, you know, as much as we, we try and make it look like a... Uh, a sport that has that is full of positives, which um, for me growing up, that's what I always seen football as. It was a sport where people can express themselves and, and just be themselves on the pitch. Um, and it's it's disappointing when things like this happen in football, but you know the reality of it is that it's it's happening, and we all have to to stand up and, and be heard, really. Um, and and that's all I can really say on it. Um, I think only time will tell if if the situation improves. Um, but. As for the time being, it's not really improved over the last few years. Thanks very much for time, Marcus. Thank you. Yeah, Marcus Rashford talking there about being the subject of racial abuse on social media. I know you spoke about it so eloquently <laughs> on Matchday Live and not that long ago, but it's something that needs to be nipped in the bud, doesn't it, Ian? Yeah, but you say nipped in the bud, it's, it's, very, it's very difficult to try and nip it in the bud. I've, I've had my, my experiences with it um, in the Premier League. I have to say, done very well in tracking down um, the perpetrator in my instance but like I said then and I'll say again now um, something needs to be done to make it not so easy for people to be anonymous um, on, on, on social media that's what it is because I totally agree with Marcus in the fact that it doesn't seem to be getting better it's actually getting worse in respects of people knowing that there's there's no there, there's no accountability for what, them, for but, what they're doing but I, I can remember years ago people saying something needs to be done five years ago, then four years ago, then three, and still to this day, we keep hearing people say something needs to be do done. Then do something. Mm. Do something, otherwise it's going to keep happening. Yeah. But it, fall, it falls on the responsibility of the Absolutely. platforms, of course. It yeah. does, yeah. And you have, to, you have to say from the platform's point of view, it's like for me, for instance, with my stuff, what I'm doing, the police were asking me to get in touch with them to see if they would release, mm. um, release, like, their like IP, so as we can get to pro prosecute them because they've, it's a criminal offence what they're doing and they will not give the police, they won't help the police. There's got to be something done that helps the police to be able to work with them so as they can w do it together. Let's hope something is done because yeah. clearly it is, it is unacceptable on all levels. Um, we have to, of course, talk about what happened on the pitch. Mm. At Old Trafford today, a uh, record equaling win in the Premier League era for Manchester United, 9-0 against Southampton. Marcus Rashford now overtakes Eric Cantona on the list of United goal scorers. Yeah, what That's a talent. Outstanding for him. What a talent. Um, full of confidence, great ability, uh, an outstanding individual, both on the mm. pitch and off the pitch. And I thought his attitude and Man United's attitude this evening was fantastic. From a forwards point of view, yeah. we said at half time, what do you do? Mm. You want to be ruthless, you want to be on the pitch, you want to score goals. And they did that. And Every time they went forward, they looked as if yeah. they were going to score. We spoke before the game how Southampton have got nine first-teamers out injured at the minute, forced to play two academy players in the 11, including 19-year-old Alexandra Jankovic. One minute 22 into his first Premier League start, Ian. Mm. This was the worst possible way for it to yeah. come to an end, wasn't it? It's really good to hear Marcus Rashford saying he doesn't believe that there was any real malice in it. It was just an over exuberant challenge from a debutant, and it was a very dangerous one. You know what I mean? I'm sure he doesn't mean it in the, he didn't mean it in a way to hurt him. He's gone in very, very robustly, and you have to say it's it's so high. It's actually it's, it's it's helped him in that respect. You know, I'm not saying that that was 
This makes it any easier for Scott McTominay to have the, the, a kick in the, in, near the, the thigh area. But the fact is, is, it's just an overzealous challenge from somebody who's eager to do well. And in, in the end, you know, you just have to be pleased that no one's really hurt long term. Ralph Arsenal's expression said it all, really. But from that moment on, it was very much one way traffic. Yeah, for 10 or 15 minutes, Man United you know, had to be patient. But we did say once the first one came, then it may open the floodgates and exactly what it did. And um, no surprise that it came from that side with Luke Shaw in great form. Um, full back to full back, Wan Basaka is there to stick it away well at the, uh, at the far post. But it was a magnificent delivery again from from Luke Shaw and it wasn't the first time in the game and he played his part in this one also. For Marcus Rashford? Yeah, with Marcus Rashford, you can see he's just in oceans of space there because by now they're chasing, they're trying to, you know what I mean, they're trying to flood the box, they're trying to get bodies in there, but you're getting the bodies in there, but you're not actually picking anyone up. Mm. He's got a lot of time and space and, you know, he, he finishes it like you'd expect him to. It was a night where nothing really went Southampton's way. Did this sum it up for you, Alan? Yeah, it did sum it up and um, we feared the, uh, feared the worst one. This one uh, went in on a really tough night for Southampton in particular, Bednarek. It seemed as if everything um, was poor about Southampton. It, it sort of revolved around him, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, really tough night for them. Um, but again, I mean, what a ball that is yeah. in from, from Luke Shaw um, onto the money for, uh, for Cavani. And he sticks it away, away really well with the header. Makes amends, of course, because he was disappointed. I had a couple of decent chances against Arsenal last time round, um, back on the score sheet. Yeah. But then United, of course, just went from strength to strength. That was a decent finish from the angle from Martial. Yeah, and, and what you're seeing now is the, is the quality, you know, the Bruno Fernandes and everybody, and then you get in there, shows good strength there to hold him off, good touch, and then he roofs it, you know. Um, but, like, we're talking about real ruthless uh, mode now they're in, they're really putting, putting them to the sword now. And you have to do that. You have to do this as a professional. You've got to say well done to the Man United players because that is their job. Yeah. Just go out and score as many goals as possible and try and entertain their fans all around the world who are watching. And they've certainly done that this evening. Um, they were brilliant. They moved the ball with pace and just created chance after chance. That was six. Three more goals still to come. But there was also time for another red card for Southampton. Yeah. Now, if there was no debating the first for the Southampton youngster, what about this one, Ian? This one feels a bit harsh, um, you know, because I, I genuinely think he's trying to get out the way. I think Anthony Marshall, for me, Al, I think he's dived. I think his touch is poor here, should be finishing that first time. It's a poor touch and he's on his way down. I don't think the bed and rack does too much here. He seem actually tries to stop there. And I think that Anthony Martial is literally already on the way down. I thought that was very, very harsh on him. Um, and look, again, Mike Dean, he's, he's, a, he's a referee. I wouldn't like to play under him. I'd be in trouble with him because for him to look at that and, and still say that that is a sending off is, for me, it's just, I'm bewildered by that. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I think it's a dive. I think the referee gets it completely wrong. I think the VAR was a farce there because it's taken far too long. Yeah. And we have to remember why VAR was brought in. It was brought in to clear up the blatantly obvious. Now, if mm. a referee can't make his mind up on the pitch, then he goes over to the VAR monitor, then he still can't make his mind up, which he didn't, uh, or he couldn't because it was taken so long. And then for him to get to that decision, I think, is plain just wrong and I do think that he's on his way down early and he's it's I think that simulation by Mar uh, by Martial it's a dive do you think the fact that David Luiz's incident earlier today for Arsenal might have had a bearing on that to, uh, on that incident I'd like, to, I'd like to hope not because you don't want but you know, if you want consistency across well, yeah but like the board like, then I, if I it's red card for one then I feel like yeah, you, you don't know. You don't know. If they, is there a message gone out? That, well, he went off for that earlier on today, so this is similar, so do the same. I genuinely, I think that with, with David Luiz as well, it's, it's, it's unintentional. He's, he's clipped him, but the law says that, you know, it's, he's not made a challenge. Um, he stopped a goal-scoring opportunity. But then I, I didn't realise that you could still get sent off for that now. I thought that changed. I think they're slightly different because in, in that game, you've got to look... At the forwards' point of view, he's clear through on goal. Mm. He's about to put the ball into the back of the net. It's a clear goal-scoring opportunity, and someone brings him down. Now, whether that's an accident or not, he clearly brings him down. Therefore, 
under the law, that is the correct decision. This one on there, Martial, Martial's on his way down already yeah. before there's even contact. Mm. So that's why I think it's totally different. OK. Time for 8-0. Anthony Martial with his second, Ian. Yeah, well, you know, now it's just a case of, like, they're queuing up. You can see the amount of players in the box now. So it's a super ball in from one bissaka And, you know, it's... it's when you, I've, I've been on the end of a 9-0, and you, you, you try, you're trying your best, but even there, you see, he gets a bit of luck because it comes off the defender and it, mm. it misses his defender, who, who, who would have cleared it, and he just gets uh, to, to blast it in. When you're going to have that much possession in a game, you want the quality to come from the wide areas and balls into the, uh, into the box, and Man United were brilliant at that, whether that was Juan Basaka, whether that was Shaw, who we've, uh, who we've spoken about, the balls mm. into the box and the finishing tonight from Man United was superb. You spoke about being on the end of a 9-0. Mm. I mean, obviously that happened only once to you. Mm -hmm. what, what will Ralph Hasenhutl be thinking after that, having done it twice? Well, he's, it, well, the good thing is, if it is a good thing, is that he's, he knows how to pick a team up from that kind of result. So that's what he has got, what a lot of, lot of managers probably won't have. So he'll know how to, to get the guys going again, but they are... In a, in, a, in a bad moment at the moment, Southampton, with the injuries, with the youngsters. And it was, they was really on the end of a real ruthless and professional Man United today. But you have to say, if there's a manager that's going to be able to get them through it again, like we've seen Southampton come through it and do very well, it's probably going to be rough. OK, well, let's get his thoughts now, shall we? Here is the Saints boss, Ralph Hasenhutl. 